Hello everyone. Today's first reading from the book of Genesis is one of the key passages from the Old Testament. For from here the story of Abraham's journey to follow God and live a life of faith begins. The Lord said to Abraham, Go forth from the land of your kinsfolk and from your father's house to your land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. All the communities of the earth shall find blessing in you. Abraham went forth as the Lord had directed him. Friends, the word bless, which is repeated five times in this short text, occurs hundreds of times in the Bible. The main Hebrew word for bless is barak, which means to kneel down an act of adoration or to give praise. Another Hebrew word for blessing is esher, which is also translated as happiness. Blessings are an integral part of the biblical narrative and they are expressed in many different ways. Sometimes God is the source of blessing and his creatures are the recipients. For instance, God created plants, living creatures, animals, man and woman, and he blessed them. At other times, the order is reversed. The creatures are the invokers of blessings and the creator God is the recipient. For example, the writer of the book of Daniel gives praise and glory to God together with the creation by saying, Sun and moon bless the Lord, all the heavens bless the Lord. Fire and heat bless the Lord, frost and cold bless the Lord, mountains and hills bless the Lord, seas and rivers bless the Lord, all plants and animals bless the Lord, and the human race praise the Lord. Similarly, the book of Genesis records a servant of Abraham bowing and worshipping the Lord with his prayer. Blessed be Yahweh, God of my master Abraham. Friends, the word Barak is also used by man to bless man. For example, Isaac called down the blessing of God upon his son Jacob. In the same way, Aaron called a blessing upon the people. The psalmist tells us that those who walk in the light of God's presence, those who walk in the fear of the Lord, and those who seek justice are the blessed people. In the Gospel of Mark, we read that Jesus embraced children, laid his hands on them, and gave them his blessing. Jesus also taught his disciples to bless those who curse them. Friends, weaving these threads together, we see that bless, blessing, and blessed refer to the bestowal of divine favor, bestowing goodness on others, glorifying and speaking well of God and others, asking for protection from evil, bringing happiness about, and so on. Friends, what did bless and blessing mean to Abraham when God spoke to him? We do not know much about Abraham's life until God spoke to him. From the chapters before today's text in the book of Genesis, we learn that Abraham born in Ur in modern Iraq, was the son of Terah, a descendant of Shem, a son of Noah. Abraham and Sarai were married and living in Haran in modern Lebanon when God spoke to him. They had no children because Sarai was barren and they were both very old. That's all we know about Abraham. We must know two important things here. One. He was a nomad who was looking for a land of his own. Two, he was childless. Having children was very important in his time, as children would carry on the family name, provide for their family, and care for their parents in their old age. Friends, much later as we read on, we learn that Abraham arrived in Canaan when he was about 76 years old. When he was 19 years old, God changed his name from Abram 
meaning high father or great father to Abraham meaning father of a multitude and his wife's name Sarai meaning my princess to Sarah meaning mother of nations and promised them a son. Eventually Abraham had his promised son Isaac with his wife Sarah and later had six more sons with Keturah whom he married after the death of Sarah. He was said to have lived to a good old age and the Lord had blessed him in every way. At the time of his death, Abraham had indeed been materially blessed by God with livestock, silver and gold. So we see that God's blessings from Abraham included God's gracious provisions for personal well-being, a long life, abundance of food, children, wealth, security, peace and God's presence. God's blessings to Abraham caused him to prosper in all that he did. He was blessed both temporally and spiritually. Friends, God had said that he would not only bless Abraham, but also bless those Abraham would bless and make his name so great that he would be a blessing to all the people on earth. Perhaps Abraham did not understand what it all meant, but it looks like God had a much larger plan than met the eye. God's plan was to bring blessing to the whole world. God had devised his universal redemptive plan long before the call of Abraham, but he merely chose Abraham as the starting point. As a matter of fact, this plan had been unfolding gradually through time since the fall of Adam and Eve. After the serpent had deceived the man and the woman into eating fruit from the forbidden tree, God declared that he would put an enmity between the serpent and the woman, and between the serpent's seed and the woman's seed. Eventually the seed of the woman will crush the serpent's head, indicating Satan's ultimate defeat. Friends, the seed was passed down to Adam's son Seth, who in turn passed it down to his own son Noah, and then to Abram, then to David through the line of Judah, and then to Joseph and Mary, and finally to Jesus. From Jesus' public ministry, we know that he healed the sick, raised the dead, cleansed lepers, cast out devils, fed the hungry, but first and foremost, he came to crush Satan. He came to break the power of sin. Friends, today we Christians believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, and believe that by his crucifixion and his resurrection, he has delivered from the power of Satan, the slavery to sin, and the fear of death. Friends, Abraham's call and blessing from God was a big one big enough to be felt through all the ages. God called Abram and Abram in faith responded to the call quickly. Just by responding favorably to God's call, God provided him with a great blessing and made him a blessing to others. From the beginning, God's promise to make Abram the father of a great nation and make his name great was indeed a great blessing but it did not come easy. They entailed a lot of discomfort, hardship and sacrifice. Yet Abraham trusted in God's word and left his land. It was the beginning of a great piece of history which would go on for centuries and which is far from being over. The history of Israel and of the Christian people and of our own history. Hence, we can also rightly call Abraham our father in faith and the father of all believers in God's power and love. Friends, Abraham's blessing also extended to his descendants as they walked with God. True to his promise, it is written that Isaac sowed his crops and within a year he reaped a hundredfold. Yahweh blessed him and he became rich. He prospered and prospered until he was indeed rich. He acquired flocks and herds and a large retinue. The Philistines began to envy him. However, 
Abraham's blessings do not come to everyone but only people of faith. St. Paul in his letter to the Romans rightly reminds us that Abraham was promised the world for his descendants and we who have faith in Christ Jesus are those descendants. He was blessed because of his faith in God's word. We must also receive these blessings in faith. If you refuse to believe the blessings are for us, we will not receive them. Friends, God still blesses us and at the same time calls us to be a blessing to others. Let us, in all humility and gratitude, accept both God's temporal and spiritual blessings to us and in turn, let us be a blessing to others wherever we are. Amen. God bless you.